you think you're hot stuff because you went to a dance. Dreamer, nobody wants to date you because you're a dog. A dog! A dog! <gasps> hey, I feel funny. Can't stand up. You are standing up. I'm a dog. <laughs> Louise, what'd you do to me? Nothing. You, you. Nothing I can't fix. It was just a mistake. I can fix it. Look at me. Oh my, look at all this hair on me. I even smell like a dog. Oh, Louise. Richard, I gotta Richard, get out of here. Help! Hey, everyone ever, and welcome to 20th Century Pop, the show where we try to understand the present while living in the past my name my name this october this october that oh god that was bad <laughs> that was bad because <laughs> that's that the, the order was off i guess i should have just said who why? i was yeah and why? then say it's october i don't know I was, I, was just, I was prepared to mention that it was october yeah would you have rather been had we discussed it would you you would have wanted to be that one well i mean we didn't discuss it because that's never you don't you, you you completely changed how you open the show you usually say your name and then i say my name bob canning and then there's either awkward silence or i say something um uh, that you talk over that both just kind of <laughs> happened yeah i'm sorry I, I don't know yeah i don't know what that was that was poor that wasn't even, and I know it seems like it was set up like that gave us the little bit about how, oh, I don't know how this works. That's not intended. I think what I just said was a little bit, but, but the, the, I, ex, I wasn't even excited. I think in my head, I was just like, don't forget to mention it's October month. <laughs> it's October month here on the show where we talk <laughs> October for a whole month. Uh, today uh, we're talking the letter O. Are, yeah, are there enough letters in October to make it through the month? I think I don't so. Know. We're going to have to have some bonus episodes. Uh, you know who's going to love that? No no one who listens, <laughs> but uh, you know, pe- fans of the alphabet might. I'm but, sorry. But uh. we're not going to talk about the letters in October. We're going to talk about... Did we say who we were? You said Bob Yeah, I, I snuck it in there. Did I say I, and I got I through mine? I did do that. I said I'm Tim You Blevins. said yours. You said October a couple times. I have. <laughs> I know the month just started, but boy, have I said that a few times. We're, we're going we're gonna to have a theme month, Tim. We're going to have a theme month, October leading up to October. Halloween. We're going to talk about uh, scary movies, scary things, monsters, and whatnot. And today, Tim, today you decided that today we would talk about witches. But not, not all witches, one particular witch a teen witch, a teen witch movie called Teen Witch. And I got to ask did. you. Yeah. I, I, I this did. This was your idea. Yeah, Teen Witch, the 1989 theatrical release, uh, Teen Witch, the April 23rd, 1989, you could have seen this on the big screen the same week Feel the Dreams and Pet Cemetery opened Teen Witch. Uh-huh. So to start off our horror month, Yes. This this is what you picked. Yes. Now, prior to two days ago, uh-huh. I had not seen the entirety of Teen Witch. I had seen some clips. I think many of us have seen a pretty famous, ridiculous dance wrap off type of sequence. That's a pretty viral thing out there. Well, I think for fans of hip hop, sure. Sure. Uh huh. It's it's Tribe Called Quest and Teen Witch. <laughs> um, so I hadn't seen this, and so you picked it for our horror themes. I thought, okay, it's it's a lighthearted horror because uh, I knew it was a comedy, um, and I knew it was it? teen related. I thought it was a comedy. I thought it was a comedy, and so I was like, okay, this will be great. I've never seen Teen Witch. Let's check it out. And man, oh man, this doesn't seem to fit the theme you were going for. At all. <laughs> <laughs> no. Had you seen no. it? Had you seen it before this was our topic? Teen Witch? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I have. I had. I had seen it um, in its entirety a few times uh, in the 1990s. In the 90s. Um, I will say I hadn't seen it in its entirety since. And maybe I owe you. A small apology. I didn't see it in its, in its entirety this week. 
<laughs> oh, I watched no. a good hour of it. And so you couldn't finish it? That was enough? You had had enough. You could have watched more, but you chose to turn it off. I did. Um, I did. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm because sorry. I watched the whole thing. Uh-huh. I thought we were going to talk about the entire movie. If we were just going to talk about the that first hour. That was the plan. Hour, no, the plan I was to talk about the just whole the first movie. hour. Yeah. And I have watched the entire one hour and 46 minutes of Teen Witch. Wow. Yeah. And in, in this century. It, it, this past weekend. Yes, sir. <laughs> What did you give up to to watch it? What was the other plan for the day? Uh, Enjoying the, the day, the perhaps. The second half of The Last Jedi, in fact. Oh, okay. Uh, I got my wife finally to watch the first half, because every time we would sit down to watch it, it's probably 8.30 or 9 o'clock at night as we finally get the kids to sleep. And she keeps saying, no, it's three hours. I don't want to watch it. And it's like, Was she okay. excited to watch this, The Teen Witch? She, in fact, was had she seen it? She had from seen her Teen Witch. She had seen Teen Witch. And I wrote down a quote here, Tim, from my wife as we sat on the couch. Uh, word for word. I don't remember at what point this happened. Probably about a half hour in. I remember this movie being a lot better than this. Oh. Yeah. That's a, that's a surprise. Because <laughs> I don't remember it being better than this. Um, so she saw it probably as a tar- in the target demographic, roughly. I think so. I think okay. it was exact, and I think that's why she was excited yeah. to to sit down and watch it with me again, um, or you know, for her to watch it again because she enjoyed it. It would bring her some uh, sweet memories of her youth, perhaps. It, sure, it didn't. No, but she thought it might. Well, and so I don't know, listeners, if you've seen Teen Witch. Um, to, 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 and I think we should get into because actually, I think what you're presenting. This whole idea of why this is, I think there is something in that that actually is worth talking about um, for a whole episode. I don't know. <laughs> but for right now, sure. Uh, very quickly, just to make sure we're all on the same page. Could, can you give, could you, you just saw it in its entirety. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you could give a little synopsis. One, would you, you wouldn't call this a, 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 a com- would you call this a comedy, this film? Um, I think it was. Intended to be a comedy. Okay. Um, you call I it a supernatural think, comedy? I think, sure, we can call it a supernatural comedy. We can't call it a horror comedy. No? We can't call it a scary movie what comedy. What about her little brother? That's scary. That character is scary. That char- Yeah. That, that character, character was disgusting. Pretty, that character is grotesque. And what's weird is if you look the younger brother character up on IMDb, there's a picture of him now. He looks like that kid, but very <laughs> handsome. It's very, I don't understand. Like, he's older, so all the features filled out, and he looks smoldering handsome. <laughs> wow, good but for him. And I know, because in the you film. You couldn't predict that from this film. I was nauseous watching him. She has this little brother who might be a, from England, might actually be an adult man. Was, I don't know. What was that That voice, that accent that he was using? <laughs> I took the liberty of ironing your mail. <laughs> or what, I, can't, I can't do the impression, um, but that is a quote. I don't know. I find I'm, I'm physically, and I do remember this from childhood, I'm, I get physically ill. He's one of the reasons I couldn't watch this movie all the way through. You know, those there, there are people I know, and I don't know too many people now. Maybe it's just a thing that happened to kids, but I'm sure there's adults that do this, but I don't know anybody now. But there are children I knew, kids I knew growing up, that when they talked, saliva would gather in the sides of their, the corners of their mouth. Oh, yeah. And sometimes it would even be crusty there because they just wouldn't wipe their mouth. <laughs> that's this kid. Like That's, that's what he, he's off of one of these other kids' mouths. He's like he's, a cold he's, sore that he's fell what's, for us. He's what's, yeah, stuck there all crusty. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He's gross. He is. It's very yeah. hard to watch him. It's very hard to watch him eat. But he was um, supposed. To, he was supposed to be gross. He was supposed to be. He was gross. Comic I, relief. They succeeded there. They well, they didn't succeed there. <laughs> but he is gross. But so that might be the horror part. But again, yeah. Would you you would call it a comedy? You may not call it horror. Would you call it a musical? At at one point, I had started to think so. <laughs> yes, I, I kind of started. This movie didn't really know what it was supposed to be. So what was it? What's the plot of the, Teen Witch? The, the which I keep wanting to say Teen Wolf, which apparently inspired it to be made. And I didn't realize this till I read it. The font, the title font of Teen Witch is the same uh, font as as what some people love. And I, I don't care for it. But uh, Teen Wolf. Is it? So predecessor is it like to a, Teen Wolf 2. Is it an uh, unofficial spinoff? Does, does it happen know. in the same universe? That, I don't, well, is Teen Wolf a musical? 
I, I don't remember. It's been a while since I've seen Teen Wolf. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. I think it was just kind of a, like, but then it's like that begets, wouldn't it have been interesting to see, like, Teen Ghost, Teen Vampire. Sure. Teen from the Black Lagoon. Teen Mummy. I mean, I, I'm just going universal characters, but you go a lot of different ways. But, yeah. but what's this particular one, because um, nobody's asking for my pitch in the Teen Supernatural Creature Saga, what, uh, what, what, is, what is this musical Teen Witch about? Uh, at at the very heart, the very basic story the heart here, of it, the at basis the heart, of the, it. Yes, is you have a a fifteen year old girl, soon to be sixteen, who is a, an outcast. She's kind of nerdy, <clears throat> but not really. Um, and she thinks she's invisible. Everybody else is cooler than she is, and she wishes, she hopes that someday she could be as popular, and have um, the most popular boy at school fall in love with her um and we she discovers and we discover that in fact she is a witch <laughs> at least this is what i'm going to say we're supposed to believe that she's a witch and i believe she's a reincarnated witch. she's, she's apparently reincarnated, a reincarnated four reincarnated times through witch. history yeah um her name that we saw her previous life was uh what was it modest modesty uh, I'm trying to think of her last name. Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, again, Miller. I Modesty, just... Mi- Modesty Miller. Thoroughly Modest Miller. <clears throat> yes. Uh, but So she's a witch, and she uses her powers as she starts to learn how to use them to become that popular girl. And then, as you would imagine, she realizes that um, tricking people into liking her isn't the same as actually finding friends that that like her for who she is just as a normal non-witch person and so at the end of the movie she doesn't she's not a witch anymore she's well, i mean i'm sure we'll get into it but yeah there's there's no will. there's no real logic to it but she she basically um she has cast a, a bunch of spells throughout the movie and she sort of in one swooping motion where she throws away an amulet that somehow plays a part in this whole thing. Um, none of those uh, spells are active anymore. And still that boy that she was in love with crosses Brad. the dance. Yes. Brad crosses the floor and dances with her. And then the movie's over. Is that, that's how it ends. I don't remember that. That is how it ends. And that's, that's exactly what I said. That's how it ends. <laughs> well, and I think and it, what you're saying, though, the conceit of the movie, this idea of wanting to be popular, I mean, that's a pretty strong, common yeah. high school movie trope. That is something you would expect. That makes sense. I don't know if that's actually what this movie's about, although it has a song that tells us that, <laughs> where she wants to be the most popular girl. But it's you're saying you don't know what this movie wants to be. I The, the realization that you said she makes at the end, that she, you know, being popular doesn't necessarily make people like you. You They should like you for who you are. It sounds like she comes across that realization. I would argue, because I wrote this down as a mixed message, 40 minutes into the movie, when they finally establish that she wants to be popular, because that's not there. That's (laughs) not there until they realize, oh, plot. She actually says to uh, the woman from Poltergeist, who is a witch named Esmeralda, maybe? I forget her name Serena. exactly. Serena. Yeah. Um, who is the witch who teaches her. She's a witch. Uh, our teen witch, as, as we'll call her, actually says, I don't, in regards to Brad, or not Tom Cruise, as he resembles, um, she says, I don't want to make him like me. I want to be popular. That's her desire. Which, in a way, <laughs> is also what she learns but she already knew that there's a weird sort of, I don't know. Cause it just, the movie just, I thought the movie is just about kids suck. We saw this a few weeks ago with square pegs. Kids are mean. Yeah. Um, and the teen witch and her friend, her, her rap artist friend there, I forget her name. Um, they're just outcasts. They're kind there's, of nerds. They're kind yeah. of businessmen, the way they're dressed in their very long coats. Well, flown coats. They're, they're very like, I immediately thought, well, here's, here's our square pegs. It's like, they just kind of took the characters from square pegs and put them in this movie. What were the names of the girls in square pegs? I forget their names. Was one of them. Uh, Louise? Lauren and now I'm blo- Patty, Lauren okay. and Patty. In this movie, it's teen witch and, Will I am? I don't know what the other girl's name is, but 
But I mean, that's that setup makes sense. This should be just schlock, and then you throw in the supernatural era. That makes sense. But I don't know. I find it odd. That I mean, it's a bad movie. I think we can say that, right? Without, yes. Yeah. Terrible. But, pl- but Teen Wolf's a bad movie. Can't Buy Me Love is a bad movie. There are plenty of bad teen movies. They, no, no, no. I don't know if those are bad though. I've seen them, but they're not bad. Like this is bad. They have you seen them recently? I haven't seen them recently. Okay, so you got me there. But I got you. But I, I got I you there. Call those movies making sense, and even though they're sort of um, an exaggeration of, of the real world, they still built themselves their own little world that made sense. But when did you see them? Teen Wolf and Can't Buy Me Love? Yeah. Uh, in the 90s. Re- oh, really? You didn't see them when they came out? Because that really ruins the point I was going to make, if that's the case. But no, no you I didn't see these growing up? I don't... I Well... You liked Teen Wolf in your 20s? I probably saw... Well, I was young in the early 90s, too. Early 90s. That's right. Okay, so high school. Yes. They're yes. high school movies. They're for yes. a high school audience. Your wife thought she remembered it being better, so she must have liked sure. it in high school. Right. It's interesting to me because I don't remember Teen Witch coming out. I would have been in eighth grade when it was released. I don't remember it coming out. I had never heard of it. I don't remember commercials for it. I was actually shocked to find out that it was released in the theater. What I know Teen Wolf from, or Teen Witch, excuse me, what I know Teen Witch from is probably, and I guess it's only three years, but like 1992, maybe late 92. I know it from when I was a senior in high school. I know this movie from after I had discovered Mystery Science Theater 3000 as a TV show. And I know this movie as one of the often, maybe too often rented video cassettes from the local video store that I and my friends would gather around in the basement of my parents' house, pop in the VCR with our popcorn and our soda, and just play to mock. This was a movie that someone brought to the house and we just made fun of. We thought it was garbage from the first time we saw it. We thought it was mock worthy, make fun of, you know, and, and from it, we grabbed all these little buzzwords and, 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 and just moments that we remembered. I first encountered it at an age where it wasn't meant for me and I could just make fun of it. And, 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 and still you wanted me to see it? Well, I did because... <laughs> Because yeah. you weren't here to to mock it with me, I was not. That would have been. I would have enjoyed doing that. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess what I find, I guess the reason I brought it up as a topic, I thought let's do this. And again, I don't think it's working the way I had hoped. <laughs> I because again, I had this little. You know, I had my five or six friends. This was a little thing to mock, make fun of, and then that was it. I didn't know Teen Witch. I didn't. I didn't take Teen Witch with me to college. When you and I met, I don't think we ever discussed Teen Witch. I didn't rent it to show people. I didn't really talk to people. Every now in my head, maybe I'd do a little bit of the rap. Maybe if I saw my friends from growing up, I'd say a line or two or I'd pass the thought. But I never thought of this fucking thing until 2009, maybe 2010. Yeah. One of those two years, I happened to be watching Thirty Rock, the Tina Fey sitcom 30 rock and nbc uh-huh. and the kenneth character is up in front of an audience trying to stall for some reason and he they cut back to him and he's performing the top that rap this moment in the movie this, and to explain to the listeners there's a moment in the movie there's these characters um i don't remember their names but there is it's three white guys at the high school who rap everything and apparently are cool or are supposed to be cool but they're always rapping now and quick Quick question, side note real quick. Sure. Are they lip syncing to music that's playing on the radio? Or are they playing instrumental music from their radio and they're the ones rapping? I couldn't quite... My understanding is that they're playing instrumental music and rapping because what are the odds of them owning a cassette that were to reflect a scenario where you're in a car (laughs) and you're shouting to a girl? What, what where where would you find that song? See now that scenario, I thought was supernatural. I thought that was like she was controlling that. The, but the earlier scenarios where they were rapping, I wasn't. I couldn't quite tell. Uh, 
No, I guess you're right, because it's a musical. You're talking about when they're driving down the street. Maybe they're and, the Teen Witches. Maybe it is supernatural. <laughs> but, but I see what you're saying, because there's, there's like more than one time that they actually were rapping to a girl. In they're this constantly movie. rapping. That's how they communicate. That's true. And Teen Witch's friend um, finds the lead rapper so attractive. And funny. really likes him. All out of the blue, by the way. I don't remember this early in the movie. But she's looking at him, and Teen Witch tells her, why don't you go talk to him? She said, oh, I could never. And so Teen Witch uses her magic, makes the stereo replay the song that was just played, and gives her friend the confidence to go rap? Yeah, freestyle. Freestyle at this guy? Tell To top that? Mm-hmm. And then to top that? And then she... Re- Likes to stay, and then she reiterates that she doesn't give a thunk what you think about that. So they're rapping back and forth. And it's ridiculous. It's dumb. It's a silly scene of rapping that doesn't make sense. And yet, that's what we made fun of. That's what we thought was so silly. And 20 years, almost 20 years later, I'm watching 30 Rock, and the character on that well-written deeply intellectually funny and brilliantly ridiculously funny just a lot of levels of comedy show a character raps that same song and acknowledges its source material and that's it and then the show keeps moving so that's the joke he he's finishing up the rap they don't even do all of it he finishes up the rap he says that's from the whatever movie teen witch and then the the show keeps moving and i sat there with my jaw dropped because they had just referenced this movie that was my movie to make fun of. That was my little thing. Yeah. I didn't know other people knew Teen Wolf but, or Teen Witch. Sorry, I keep fucking doing that. Teen Witch. And But what I began finding when I would go onto YouTube or when I would talk to a couple other people is that people knew it. People knew the top that scene was infamous. Uh, how did this get made? Eventually you did it on their show. And just this realization that kind of washed over me. This this thing that's like people did grow up watching this. Or, like I did, discovered it shortly after, and we're just of an age to make fun of it. But this right. is something that's in the pu- – this is a cult classic? Yeah. I, I mean, was just shocked to find that out. It's the only scene of the movie that I was aware of. You're, you're talking about the scene being a cult classic. I'm talking about the movie. You think the movie considered a, a cult, cult classic? classic? There's a stage show yeah. of it. It does midnight wow. showings. You can find interviews with the cast talking about it. I was just – that blew my mind because it's well, not a movie it, – Isn't it a cult classic because of how bad it is? Like, sure. Uh, like Trolls 2 and, and – That's uh, one reason. I mean, Buckaroo Banzai is a cult classic. Um, you know, Repo Man's a cult classic and those are great movies. No, that, for, but that's true. What I'm saying is I'm just shocked because there are plenty of awful movies out there that I've seen that are just bad movies – this is something that I had not heard of, did not grow up with, enjoying, just rented to make fun of, and suddenly to find out that enough people had seen it, that it was in the culture and in the example of your wife, people who liked it, people who watched it and liked it. And I'm just like, how, at, at an age where I feel like I was in touch with pop culture, high school, you know, we'll say high school and after high school. How was it that I didn't connect that this thing existed? And how did it take me 20 years to realize it had connected with other people? Where was that disconnect to not know there was fandom for this little thing? The way that I feel like I know there is for everything I like or know or watch. Like I know people know Megaforce, which is like my favorite bad movie. People know it and I get it. And I get why Barry Boswick's in it. It's a rah-rah Republican travesty of a Go Army movie from the early 80s. It's awful. I get that. I love Rock and Roll, the animated movie, and people like that. I get that too. But I've always had those touchstones of talking to people about it. This movie, the idea that people knew this movie came out of the blue to me. Does that seem odd or does it sound like I'm just reaching for a topic here? No, I mean, that doesn't seem odd. I mean, you seem to have um, a purpose for it for a short time period um, in your high school years, and then you were done with it. And you didn't need to seek it out again. And you probably, if it came up in your peripheral, wouldn't notice it because it just wasn't a thing to you anymore. Um, that could be a possibility. Uh, and then when it did start to bubble up, uh, you, you may not have even connected it to that old movie from 10, 15, 20 years ago. 
I guess I wonder, how does something get made into a cult movie? Like, how did this happen? When was this all of a sudden something that was a touch point for everyone? Like, are there, can you think of something from your childhood that you would consider is a cult classic that you were into, or at least were aware of? Um, uh, uh, Interestingly, off the top of my head is is a product, not a movie. <laughs> What's uh, the pro- Big League Chew? Mad Balls. Oh, man, be okay. Like Mad Balls, not a lot of people know about Mad Balls, but the people that do know about Mad Balls very much enjoy Mad Balls and want to know which ones you had. And, and that's that's something that pops into my head. Or they shopped at Hot Topic where they re-released Mad yeah. Balls a few years ago. Early Edition. That's another one that I liked. That was I was a little older, though. <laughs> the Nobody TV show, Early to... Edition. Yeah, I loved Early Edition. Are you encountering people, or have you encountered that subgroup of people who are also discussing early edition? Is that something that's happened to you? No, not often. Not often or not never? Not never. Never, never. Okay. And I ask. <laughs> it's like, hi, <laughs> uh, I'm new at this job. How are you? Uh, <laughs> what do you think of the CBS series early edition? Uh, Fisher Stevens fan? Yes, no? Fisher Stevens is in early edition? Uh, I believe was I'm he remembering... early edition? No, he was he was a neighbor, uh, best friend uh, early edition. Um, early edition. That's the guy gets a newspaper every day, but it's tomorrow's, tomorrow's newspaper. Yeah. And that works episode to episode. That doesn't get old fast. Uh, correct. It that's correct. That was a question, but yeah. that's correct. Okay. It's really it was a it was a great little movie, great little show. And side note, I know we're off topic, but there's that new show that's coming out. I don't know if you've seen the ads for it. God friended me. Yeah. It's it's basically early edition. It's instead of a newspaper, it's a Facebook post. So is it a local newspaper that he gets? Yeah, I think he did. I think it was. I mean, he was okay. in a city. I think it was New York, but I'm not positive. But like, I'm is the news huge... like uh, local cat and tree, or is it terrorists take down Tower Two? I mean, like, what it, is it? Because was... the idea, the conceit is he can stop the future by what he reads. E- e- yeah, or change it, or help people. Um, yeah, he'll read about a, a traffic accident that killed a baby, and then he'll go and stop that accident from happening or something like that. Huh. Every episode, every day, this happens to him. Well, it happens to him once a week, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Is there ever an issue he picks up? He's like, oh, well, that's fine. And There was an news. episode, yeah, there was an episode where he just didn't want to open the paper. <laughs> well, And then he had a blind friend who would open it for him. I don't remember all of this. Wait, so his blind friend would unfold the newspaper for him? <laughs> and give it to Fisher Stevens so he could read it. Why is Fisher Stevens on the show? Fisher Stevens, who, if I'm thinking right, the villain from Hackers? Yes. And the Indian guy from Short Circuit? <laughs> yes. Okay. That Fisher Stevens. And Rachel's boyfriend <clears throat> from one episode of Friends? That's or maybe Phoebe's? Might have been Phoebe's. It was Phoebe's. He was a psychiatrist who, or psychologist who kind of... Analyzed the group. Yeah. That was the episode where they kind of re- realized how Chandler talks, wasn't it? Um, or was that later? Where I the mean, writers realized had they had caught up with, oh, this is how he talks, let's make they, fun they, of it. They did it a few times. I, I don't think it was about how he talks, but why he had to make jokes. Oh, okay. Not the cadence of how he talks. Right. We'll link to both our Friends Season 3 <laughs> and our Fisher Steven episodes in the show notes. <laughs> Um, I mean, I guess it would, would I'm just, I, so I don't know. I, I, early edition may not be the same experience and maybe this isn't an experience. I'm just, I'm just wondering what may, what is it to live through as we get older and, and realizing that we've lived through things that now have cult status. Like sure. it's one thing to have lived through the matrix. We kind of get that because it was a big deal. And I remember that happening or Blair yeah. Witch. And I can remember the change before and after and how that worked. I can't understand living through Star Wars because it was kind of always there. It wasn't. There was a couple years without it, but I didn't see, I didn't acknowledge it as a phenomenon. I didn't acknowledge it as, you know, it was just, it was always the language, the exchange that to, to talk about. I'm trying to think of the things that I've seen become cult hits over time. And this, this is the example, I guess. And it's a weird thing because it's not, it's not organic. It doesn't organically become a cult thing because when it came out in 1989, it was a theatrical release. Does that make sense? Does this feel like a movie that you would have gone to the theater to see? Um, I could see that it was a movie of that era. 
in the really? theaters. Of sure. that era, but not direct to... Like, this feels like a sexed-up Disney movie from the Disney Shh, Channel now. It does. Like That's true, the too. The Wizards of Lady Chatterley Place or something. Or, or it felt like a direct-to-VHS tape. Did you watch it? Did you watch it long enough to see the uh, the the seduction tower that he took her to in the, in the movie? Do you recall uh, that? Who takes who to that? No, uh, not Tom Cruise takes Teen Witch into uh, some abandoned house somewhere, and he goes. He suddenly disappears, and she turns to look for him, and she looks up the stairs, and there he is, kind of leaning on the banister, like come hither look. And she starts walking up the stairs. He's gone again, except she finds his jacket. So then she gets the idea of what's happening. She takes off her jacket. And then he keeps. she keeps walking, and now he's, like, unbuttoned his shirt. And she's, like, kicking off her heels. And it's this whole thing. And they end up making out pretty disgustingly, I might add. This was the era of, we're going to French kiss, and you're going to see my tongue go into this person's mouth. Oh, the you is the audience. Yes. Held held captive in an Alex from Clockwork Orange like fashion, um, and so basically, it's sort of implied they have sex, but you is know, that, they, do they? It's sort of implied they don't. I don't think they do. And then later, when she talks about it, they just talk about the kissing. Uh, but the way it leads up to, if this were a slightly older uh, uh, character, then yes, they would be having sex next. Um, it was very. I mean, even the opening. Is, well, yeah, it's a soft porn Cinemax opening. Yeah. Uh, so I honestly thought for a moment when you said, hey, go watch Teen Witch, I thought, oh, maybe my girls would want to watch that. They're kind of getting to that age where they might enjoy a comedic coming of age story. And I'm so glad that they did not watch this movie. So who is this movie aimed at? Do you think? I, What's the, I, I'm the not audience? sure. I think you're teenagers? right. I think it's teenagers. I think it's teenage girls, um, which is good. I yeah. mean, I don't know. You know, like that's is I it written well for a teen, a female teenage I, character? No, like is it, it's not. No, I don't think so. Um, and I'm not trying to like say it's not written well because um, it's probably not written. It may have been made up as they filmed. Exactly. It's just it's just a bad movie. I mean, things happen that make no sense. Marshall Wallace is in this. Yeah. Uh, and Krabappel, and she just suddenly wins the lottery. Y- you don't Via see... Via magic, T. Witch the... wins the lottery for her. Yes, but you don't see that setup. You don't see her yeah, wish... You get it, because she's you so just... like, oh, you deserve it. Yeah, yeah, you deserve it. And it's like, okay, yeah, she she must have done that. And then she just randomly comes up later sending her postcards... Uh, kind of sexual-related postcards about what she's doing with the man that came into her life because yeah, this of magic. is a wet movie <laughs> this movie is wet over so that's what i was surprised by this horn horny marsha wallace sequence <laughs> is a softer example of that because you're right it, it, that, that's weird yeah. to me a little bit there's there's the opener which is this erotic dream that i guess t which is having where she's dancing is she dancing with not Tom Cruise uh, in that. I think it's, so. it's it's not Tom Cruise. Um, they're are we sort stealing of, that from another podcast by calling him not Tom Cruise? I'm yeah, we think, are. Uh, well, our we pod, are. our 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 episode though. We had a not we character. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was just, a, now, now I'm trying to think. Did I hear that somewhere else? Yeah. You. you I think when we would watch it, we, I did. Yeah, that's your thing. I think one of my friends probably did. I'm taking it from my friends. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but they weren't really dancing. They were more like just. You know, uh, following each other across a roof uh, slowly with a lot of wind. There was a lot of wind up yeah. there, and it's just, but it's erotic. And then it it's falls. She be. falls out of bed. She's in school. There's this Marshall Wallace thing. There is actually, and I have to say, it is my favorite part of the movie, and the one part of the movie I sincerely laughed at. And it has no bearing on the movie. I don't know why it's there, but there's a scene in sex ed class. <laughs> where the teacher is so awkward and the class is just finding it hilarious watching her and she's trying to explain what a condom is and it's you know it's 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 a you know it's it's doing what health class should do which it's not 
it's not denigrating sex. It's saying if you're going to have sex, be, be, be safe. But she's she, one, the rapper kid tells us a bunch of different words for condom in a quick rap that he gives. But she's like explaining that it's a condom and the whole class in unison, a class which does not include teen witch nor her friend. So I don't know why we're following these characters. They all recede in unison, re- repeat in unison as if they've never said the word before. Condom. And, and repeat, like they're hearing about it for the first time. And it's it's a funny, predictably <laughs> awkward scene. An umbrella gets opened comically. There's other misunderstandings. I don't know why why that's in the film. Yeah, this could have been like a, a better off dead sort of comedy. Well, that's it giving it a lot have, of credit. It, well, I am giving it a lot of credit. It could have been. There were moments where it's like they were trying to do that sort of thing. I mean, There's even the little moment. brother character, as Ugh, disgusting as no, he is, tasting my is, dinner. is very much like other characters from that era of, of teen comedies. Um, and But were those good teen comedies, I guess? Because this is a bad movie. The, yeah, and I think Better Off Dead's a fine a better off, comedy. Yeah, Better Off Dead is. That's what I'm saying. Could this be Better Off Dead or could this have been more Teen Wolf? It could have been. It could have been more of anything, mm-hmm. because it is pretty bad. It's just the story is basic. There's no real laughs. There's no real romance either. You know what I mean? Like none. Of, it's so just superficial. I'm saying I want him to like me, and now he's saying he likes me. There's you know. There's really nothing. Well, going that's witchcraft. On. But it isn't even witchcraft, because. She, she, we don't even get to witch things for like a half an hour. Mm -hmm. And then she's told when she turns 16, she'll be a witch. You'll get these powers. Then she turns 16 and nothing happens for like three days. Of Um, real time. The movie plays for three days of nothing happening. And then I, and, and then what happens is pretty like huge where she says to the nerd sex fiend. Oh yeah. Set that up. They're going to a um, sex fiend drug dealer. Here's why I here's why I got the movie. They go to a fall dance, so I thought that's Halloween, um, and and one of the popular girls hooks Teen Witch up with her very horny cousin. Yeah, it's supposed to be a nerd, I think initially. Initially, but they don't have a grasp of what it is because he actually he looks like what hipsters look like now, right? So whatever cool kids look like now. Yeah, but he goes from being an awkward nerd to being a date rapist pretty quickly in Very the context quickly. of the movie. And he also offers her some weed, yeah. or as he calls it, some weed. <laughs> like it's, it's a movie that posits weed is only the, is, is the bad kid. That's when he becomes the bad kid. Yeah. But yeah, he, he assaults her in the car, what's supposed to be comedy. And she's, yeah, she uses her witch powers to erase him from existence. Basically. He never comes back and nobody seems to care. That's why he's erased from existence. She's blanked everyone's mind out yeah. that he was ever even there. His glasses <laughs> fall to the seat, but he's decimated from existence, Thanos style. And then she uses that because she says, I wish you would leave me alone. And that's when he disappears. So then she, for a couple um, spells, their wishes where she says, I wish this. Then later she's using potions. And then later she's not even saying or doing anything and things just happen. And yeah, she's then, learning her to use her powers. I mean, it sounds like initially it's more teen genie. <laughs> Teeny. Yeah. Um, and then an amulet comes into play for some reason. And that needs to be held and rubbed. Um, there's it's just like it's no, out of sequence. It's, like you it's totally <laughs> out of sequence. Out of There's no sequence. They were just throwing everything out there. Different ways that, that things could happen. And it's it's just not a good movie. Like, I wouldn't mind if it wasn't that funny. As long as you had, like, a story that made sense and a, and a world where this made sense. But none of it made sense. None of it made sense. And that, that just bugged me. That, that Teen Witch did not make sense. There are no rules to the Teen Witch world Correct. that you can follow. I prefer now, my supernatural powers to to have some rules. Yes. Well, we do a segment sometimes on this show called Retro Shock. And in those segments, we do something where we talk about a movie we remember from childhood. Then we break, go watch the movie, come back, and actually talk about how it impacts us now. And those conversations go one way because it's something we grew up with and we can approach it as adults. With Teen Witch right now, 
we both watched it. We didn't really have, or you didn't really have the predecessor to that. This isn't something that you had any connection with right. prior. And I guess that's what I'm trying to figure out. This, I do find this movie insufferable. It was <laughs> not fun to watch. It was better than I remembered it in parts. <laughs> But I was like, you know, I'm not enjoying revisiting this movie, and I don't get why it's so big. But the reality there probably is just I, I we didn't grow up with it. Like, I, I'm going to guess on my limited memory of it, so maybe this can be disproved, that this movie isn't better than Teen Wolf. I think I just happened to have seen Teen Wolf at 11. I can relate to Michael J. Fox, but I mean, I don't, I don't go back and watch Teen Wolf. I don't remember loving Teen Wolf, but I found it funny. I'm sure it's awful. I'm sure it has plot holes, and I'm sure it doesn't hold up. But because I grew up with a, a little, it's got a little respect. This Teen Witch, I wish your wife was on the show because I don't know anyone who actually grew up with it yeah. as a movie they enjoyed watching. You know, I hear about and, I, and it's it gets shown on uh, Freeform's thirty one. Now it's called Thirty One Days of Halloween. I think it used to be thirteen. They show it once in a while. It gets played. I watched it on Stars, the Stars <laughs> Network. So it's being shown. You can find it. It's 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 got a, a a holiday thing. I'm just I don't get its place in the public consciousness because for for that to happen, something like uh, your Xanadu, you know, or the Apple. Or or Buckaroo Banzai, something enjoyable, perhaps. Yeah. Or like I just saw last week, the Transformers movie. Like these things that maybe weren't hits when they come out, they found an audience that liked it and it meant something to them. I don't get the feeling, teen, and, and I'd love to be proven wrong, and I would open this up to, to listeners. If you grew up with this movie, please, please let us know, because I don't, I never hear of this. The way I hear of Greece, you know, the way I hear of any of these movies that 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 people grew up with loving, and yet it has that same standing. It has that same cult, fucking cult standing. I I th- I wouldn't be surprised if you're misreading that cult standing. I think y- you mentioned Greece. Greece has got its following because it's great. Greece too also has a following. Because it's terrible. I'm going to disagree with you there. Okay. I think, and maybe, and Grease 2 might be doing what Teen Witch fails to do. Grease 2 is liked by a generation after us. Grease 2 has been found by the generation after us. I don't know any of my friends, circle of friends. But aren't they finding it and enjoying it, ironically, just like you did with your friends watching Teen Witch? To, I don't to know because well, and I guess we'd have to have a millennial on a show. Um, a lot of what I hear about people liking Greece is because they or Greece two is because they don't like Greece one. Greece two reverses the gender of the roles and gives the female character in, in this case, and I don't know the character's name. Michelle Pfeiffer's character is the lead. And so she's the proactive one. It's not about Sandy giving up who she is to win over. Um, John Travolta's character's name, <laughs> which I just forgot, Danny Zuko. It's about someone staying true to themselves to win over someone. So I think there's a, a flip of that makes it more approachable. And I think they're finding it, but I think the reason they like it, yeah, isn't necessarily I love Grease 2. It's like Grease 2 is a better movie than Grease, which I've heard about. So now I like Grease 2. So there's a different reason hmm. to build it up. But I think that's there because... I've seen Grease 2. I saw it in the 90s. I thought it was ridiculous. I thought it was dumb. I thought I would never hear about it again. And it's only in the last two years, maybe, that it's really it's come back somehow. That is a movie that achieved its cult status. And again, I, that's a good one. I, I think that's the reason how. But how did these kids find it? Because I don't know anyone of my generation who was talking about, again, my generation, yeah. but, you know, I don't know anyone who would have grown up when Grease 2 would have been a thing. I didn't I mean, even Grease... know Grease 2 existed until about 10 years ago. Really? Yeah, 10, 10 15 years ago. Oh, so I remember it on TV, probably around the time John Travolta was having his second comeback with Pulp Fiction, because Grease was on TV, and so then they would show Grease 2. <laughs> but that's an, I maybe we should watch Grease 2. I don't know, because that's something, that's another version of these things. I guess I'm trying to figure out, how do you... Not for everyone, but for you and I, who I think live, lived and continue to live our lives ingrained in this pop culture you know, sphere, 
you know, I feel like in the 80s and 90s, I was plugged into what was on the radio, what was in the theaters, what was on TV. And it sounds like you were too, from what we talk about. So we know what's out. We know what's coming out. Even if we didn't see it, we know when it came out. How does something like Grease 2, which would have been the better topic for today probably, <laughs> or Teen Witch, how do those things not, how do we miss them becoming the cult thing? And how did we miss them the first time around? Like, that's a phenomena I understand now because I'm not at the forefront of the pop culture minute. I don't have my finger on the pulse of Get Out. I didn't see Get Out. And I, you know, and, and I hear about it, and, it, and it's, it's this phenomena horror movie, phenomenal horror movie. And I didn't see it because I wasn't, I wasn't there to see it. Harry Potter, I missed out on that because I didn't read those books. But, you know, I guess I still knew it. But I'm just, I'm not plugged into the pop culture the way I was. So I can miss stuff now, but how do I miss two things from the 80s that are heralded as greats now? Grease 2, I guess I can understand a little bit because it's not like it's our generation. Again, I don't mean to keep saying that, but just in the basis of when we experience things, it's a it's people coming to it for different reasons. But Teen Witch, the people who are making fun of the top that rap or loving it, the people who remember, who talk about it, and these people out there who are doing midnight showings in a stage show of it, they're our age. <laughs> I think. So how does that happen? How does something suddenly become a cult thing? How do we miss that? And I, I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. Well, I think what we're missing is whether or not it's a cult thing because they love it or because they love to loathe it. Well, it can be either. Like, what what are some cult movies that you love to loathe for you personally? Not like Plan 9 from Outer Space, unless that is one that you love to loathe. But but something that – do you have those? Do you have the cult movies that you love to watch that are so bad? Um, I don't like, – you know, I wasn't expecting that question. I haven't really given that much thought. I mean, there's – just in what we've been talking about, like, Trolls 2 comes up. But that's – again, that's a cult thing. It's not just me personally. What do I like personally? Have you seen, I've never seen Troll 2. I've just seen the documentary, uh, so I don't know I've the movie. I've seen Trolls 2 like four or five times. Really? Yeah, at gatherings, at events, at the people having uh, bad movie marathons. Um, and that's how it happens. I guess, you know, like The Room has done that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Birdemic does that. How does that start? I guess I'm just wondering, how does something become a cult in a group? Like who, somebody saw Troll 2 not to see it as a goof and they must have brought it into the circle, brought it into the cult, the group, the, 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 the culture, whatever. Yeah. And it became this thing. Because it's like, I, you, you have to see this thing. I can't be the only one that suffers this, the existence of this. I guess is that, is that what is that how cults are born? I am suffering. You will suffer too. Here's the volcano throwing up books. I so troll to it, but there's not like I you know I can pick a couple things. Megaforce is one of the, Megaforce, Teen Witch, and the Skateboard Kid would be the three examples I would grab right out of the gate. And they're all things that I saw in the '90s. They're not things I saw when they first came out. I guess. Cliffhanger. So, the, the I Sly Stallone Steven movie. Stallone. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone, not Steven Stallone. I will, Stallone. I, I will watch Cliffhanger if it's on. And I think most people regard that as a not great movie. Mm -hmm. uh, but is it a cult thing that people... like? I, 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 guess I don't what, know that it is. It, it, it could become a cult thing. I don't <laughs> think it, I don't think it currently is, but... And, how, uh, and then is that... That's an organic thing, though, right? Like, something doesn't... You can't make something You can't something force a cult it, no. Movie. Like, do you remember, and I was about to say when it came out, it's it's 12 years old now, <laughs> but do you remember Snakes on a Plane, that movie? I do remember that coming out. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. Most people haven't seen it. <laughs> but it was billed as, I remember hearing someone say, it's going to be the next big cult movie. Yeah. You can't say that. No. You can't and it, make And it didn't become that. Movie. I don't think it became I that. I guess not. No. No. So I don't know why I brought that up, but I don't know. I guess you know, well, you, you brought it up because it it is organic. You can't force it. Um, the moment that someone started saying that, the producers of the movie started pushing that. They even, from my understanding, reshot some things to include lines of dialogue that people said, "Oh, this movie better have that." And I think we know what that line is. That wasn't in the script to begin with. Some, you know, fans of of Samuel Jackson started saying, oh, man, I hope he tells the, the snakes to get off his motherfucking plane. And so that wasn't in the script. What kind but, of snakes were they? Uh, motherfucking snakes, I believe. 
Um, and so they go and they shoot that, and there it is, and they please those people. But you you have just forced upon the audience what they were expecting anyway, and so it's not a surprise. It's not endearing. They don't need to bring other people to it to see it because you don't need to see the movie anymore because that's just out there and it's known. So, uh, yeah, it, it is an organic thing. But can it happen anymore then? Can you have a cult movie now in a culture where everyone's talking about everything all the time, where a movie can respond in real time to a fan base online saying, you better have this, better have that. I think you can. I think you have, I mean, this is just off the top of my head, so I'm not exactly sure, but I think you probably have short-lived ones. I think you have quick little cults on things, movies, uh, albums, TV shows that are short-lived little cults. And then once everybody starts to know it, it sort of dies down again. Um, I'm trying to think of examples. Well, like The Room, for instance. I mean, I think that's lasted because it's sort of drawn out. But there was a time where it was this cult thing that only a small number of people knew about. And then, you know, then a book gets written about it. And then a movie gets made about that book and, and that sort of thing. So it's no longer a cult. It's just what it is. It's it's multiple <clears throat> stories in our forms. Um, the cult of that is gone now. You can't really have the cult now because it came up out of out of that and became a bigger thing. Do you think it can come back to that? Can something become kind of a cult thing again? Um, over time, perhaps. Like, what's your take on what I would consider to be the biggest cult film of all time? But then I'm like, is it? Because it's been on Glee. Um, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's a cult film, right? Yeah, that's definitely a cult film. Has it become safer over time as a cult thing? Like, people can go to these shows. There's a show every week. They did a live version of it on TV. Are those still going people on? People know it. Are, are those live shows yeah, sing along. And it's still almost happen. sad. It, it used to happen uh, close to where I live. It used to happen in, in Cambridge, in Harvard Square, at this kind of nice theater that was there. And when it closed down, it moved to the big megaplex in Boston, the, the Boston Commons Theater. And they show it midnights on a Saturday night. Now, I've never gone, by the way. I've never gone I've to, never to see Rocky either. Horror. So I'm not part of that movement. I enjoy the movie. But. At the same time, I'm like, when you have, like, I would be surprised if there hasn't been, but, you know, an episode of the Goldbergs where they go to the Rocky Horror Picture Show, there was that TV version. It's referenced and known in the populace now. It's not a secret thing. People know what to shout. People have recordings of it that they can learn that whatever it's from. Is it, you know, but the people who are going to see it hopefully still love it and have that feeling. But yeah, are, I, I wonder, is it cap is it possible to have a cult of something more like is Buckaroo Banzai a cult movie still is Repo Man a cult movie is the gem cartoon, a cult classic. Like are these things like Arrested Development was a cult show for a while. Now it's had two seasons on Netflix, heavily promoted on Netflix, Netflix, which millions and millions of people have. I can't be a cult show anymore. Right? Yeah. So it feels like it changes, and 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 Teen Witch. I, again, I think I I I thought we would be able to do something different with it and talking about Halloween, spooky movies, Teen Witch, and it didn't work out. <laughs> no. it obviously, didn't work out. But I feel like it's not huge. <laughs> like yes, I get referenced on an episode of Thirty Rock, and yes, via YouTube you can watch these clips, and yes, because of the internet, I've learned there's other little pockets of fandom, but I, I guess that's still a cult movie because I feel like it hasn't, it's not, you know, like there are, you know, Rocky Horror is classically a cult thing. You get it. Yeah. People well, I didn't it. know, I didn't know that there were Teen Witch uh, live performances, midnight showings. Well, I think there was a stage show. I think a comedy troupe did a stage show. I think there are midnight showings of it around. You know, it's just one of those things people like it, so they, they, they get it back into the, the atmosphere. And maybe this has always happened. I don't know. You know, maybe that's how Plan 9 stayed alive. Maybe that is actually how, that is kind of how Rocky Horror built its following. It just kept getting shown. So maybe these kind of things do keep happening. 
I just don't know if we can ever be aware of it. Like I wish I could see from start to finish how something becomes a cult, whatever. But I think we're always going to, for it to happen, you have to miss a part of it. You either can't be there when it started or you have to blink and miss that suddenly people are seeing it. Because I, I can't think of a single thing I watched. Oh, this became a cult hit. Because I, I just like that would be a weird statement to make. But Teen Witch, like, I, like if I had grown up watching it, I don't think my relationship with it, I probably would have had more to say, actually. This probably would have been an episode worth listening to. Thank you, listeners. But because I, you know, I was still a kid, but we were watching it to mock it. Only a few years on, that's the weird thing to me. Like, this is a movie of the 80s, cusp of the 80s, but of the 80s. Something I would have watched. And somehow from between 1989, where I would watch Problem Child, which I guess was 1990, or any crap on the big screen, between that and 1992 when we rented Teen Witch, I suddenly learned how to not like something. I suddenly learned how to make fun of something. And I could look at Teen Witch and think, what a crap film. Even though three years prior to that, I was watching movies that were similar to that. Yeah, I just didn't happen to watch that one. Well, I'm glad I've watched it. You are? <laughs> no. <laughs> and that was our episode, apparently, about <laughs> cult movies. And if you liked any of that, I'm going to say this time, without choice, if you liked any of what just happened, go to 20popcast.com. Why? Because, you know, you can subscribe. You can subscribe to the show. You can get another episode of this show next week. And another. And another. 20popcast.com is our main website that has connections, uh, links to subscribing to the show on I, Apple Podcast, on Stitcher, on Google Play. What am I on? I don't know. This is going great. You can also follow us on Twitter at 20popcast. You can follow us on Instagram also at 20popcast. Um, you can follow me at subcultist. What's going on? That's rough. That was rough. No, that's great. You can follow yeah. me also on Twitter at RH Canning. That's a thing. Yep, that's a thing. And yeah, definitely go to the website and find us on Facebook and leave your comments. Is this a cult movie for you or is it just a movie? <laughs> yes. I would like to hear, honestly, if, um, and then people do sometimes on the Facebook, they're kind of good about this. If you like Teen Witch, please let us know why. Let us know if you grew up with it. Let us know what you enjoy about it. Let us know the last time you uh, watched it. And maybe next episode we can talk a little bit about that. Because I feel like we didn't do the movie justice. I don't think the filmmakers did it justice. But I don't think we did Teen Wolf any favors with this episode. And maybe we, maybe it deserves another watch. <laughs> another watch october is here and it's all about ghosts and things <laughs> do you have a catchphrase you normally say here yeah i changed it to october oh that was the that's what i was going that, for october is, is that the new one or just for october just for october oh because well, i feel like people are finally understanding the other one oh, really that's you fine. think so for sure if they're understanding it, then they'll understand October. That's true. And when I say people, I mean our audience. When I mean our audience, I mean that I listen to this twice to get our <laughs> numbers up. So I get it. Here's a sentence I wasn't sure I'd be able to say 82 episodes in. That was our Teen Witch episode. <laughs> and if you enjoyed our Teen Witch episode... I'm sorry, did you have more to say about Teen Witch? No, but you're right. 82 episodes in maybe like 140 we would have a mm. Teen Witch episode. But yeah, not 82. Yeah. I guess if we do a Jason Bateman month, we can do Teen Wolf 2. <laughs> I wouldn't mind that. We I could do a Grease 2 it. and a Teen Wolf 2. And... Uh, uh, oh, Splash Two, uh, the, Jerk great, two. the Great Escape Two. Was there one? Yeah, exactly. There was a Great Escape Two, and Christopher Reeve was in it. What year was this? Uh, seventy something. I've 70 never seen I've never something. Seen it. Huh? Have you seen The Great seen Escape? The um, probably you probably showed yeah, it to I me. Probably showed it's it. It's got a motorcycle it and sure, a Steve McQueen in it. It sure does. And he gets out of some place <laughs> a few times. He gets out a few times, or you've seen it a few times? Uh, he gets out a couple times, yeah. Oh, but they keep pulling them back in. Is that where that's from? 
Uh, no, that's not. That's the that. Godfather, isn't it? That's right. There's a little cult film for you, The Godfather. I haven't seen it, but I love cult movies. <laughs> uh, 